So day one of Super Sebring is officially in the books and we got quite a bit of insight out of these first two sessions that took place for the WEC practice. Now, uh, today I'm going to be talking through those and uh, giving you a little bit of my insight on what's going on uh, in the world of WEC. So, uh, first thing I'm going to talk about today is the results from session number one. Now, I'm actually recording this before session number two takes place because I've got stuff going on later today and obviously I'll end up getting this video out late. You'll know that when it's out, but uh, I was just going to get this done now so that I have less to do tonight so that I can get it out slightly quicker. Anyways, uh, first up, from session one, it was actually the Glickenhaus fastest of anyone. Uh, the 708 had a 149.738. Uh, second fastest was the number 36 Alpine with a 150.263. Uh, third fastest was the number 8 Toyota with a 150.267. Uh, fourth, the real team, number 41, with a 150.477. Fifth, the Toyota, number 7, with a 150.633. And sixth, the number 9 Prima with a 151.068. I've added a sixth result there since all the hypercars were in the top five, so I didn't have to have that bar thing down at the bottom telling me, telling you guys where the rest of the hypercars were, because they're all in the top five. Anyways, um, notable things about this first session from the top six, uh, Glickenhaus, fastest, always, that's, you know, going to be a notable thing, but it's the first session, Toyota and Alpine are probably tanking to get BOP, to get better BOP, but that's always weird. Um, second, Again, the number seven Toyota is very slow. They're four tenths off their teammate, um, which is, again, quite concerning, considering that the number eight Toyota was four one thousandths of a second off the Alpine. So they were basically dead even, and then the Glickenhaus was half a second faster than them. So that, that screams tanking, especially considering that, um, that the... Uh, everyone was faster than that in testing, so I... I assume that those two teams, the 36 and the 8, are probably tanking. I just realized I overlooked the fact that they're probably doing race runs. So if you're screaming at me in the comments that it's not anything about BOP, um, you're probably right. So yeah, they're probably doing race runs. Ignore what I said. I don't know about the 7 car. I'm sure that they're doing whatever the 8 car is doing, but it's odd that they would be half a second almost slower than their teammate, 4 tenths slower than their teammate. You know, I wonder if there's something going on over at that seven team. I wonder if there's something legitimately wrong. That they're just that much slower than their teammate car. But who knows? Uh, moving on to the fastest by class, obviously. Um, the number 708 Glickenhaus fastest. Uh, second, not second, I keep doing that. Uh, fastest P2 was Real Team, the number 41 with a 150.4. I already read that. Um, fastest in the Pro-Am division, uh, was the Algarve Pro number 45, the 151.683. Fastest of the GTE cars was, again, the Porsche 92, so they seem to be carrying over from where they left off in testing. Fastest with a 158.827. And fastest in GTE AM, uh, the Team Project 1 number 46 with a 158.906. They were actually faster than the Corvette. Now, I'm sure that that's their Pro driver, but it's very odd that a GTE Pro was fast, or a GTE AM was faster than all but two of the GTE Pros. Um, again, just wanted to pull the results up there. Uh, again, the both of the AF Corsa cars were significantly slower than their teammates. Um, the fastest, if I can pull it up, uh, the fastest AF Corsa car had a two minutes point two nine eight lap. Uh, the fast, or the number sixty four Corvette was uh, one fifty nine point eight nine three, and uh, the 52 AF Corsa, who was also slower than the 51 in testing, is again slower than the 51 uh, on the first day of official running with a 201037. So that's almost, that's eight tenths slower than their teammates. So AF Corsa seems to be struggling quite a bit. And I mean, they were slower than quite a few GTE Pro cars now, or GTE AM. But now, the, those GTE M cars were probably pro drivers running, but generally, and from what we had seen in testing, the pro guys were faster than the M guys. Even the pro 
drivers in the AM cars were slower than the pro teams. So, I don't know, that's all confusing to say, but if you understand what I'm saying, it's interesting that um seems to be a bit closer competition between the pro and the AM division, and they, of course, are struggling again. So, some of the main things that kind of moved over from, you know, testing to um, the first day of actual running here, at least the first practice, A, of course, is slow, the 7 Toyota is slow, and the 92 Porsche is fast. So uh, we're going to move on to session number two. All right, so moving on to the second practice, fastest overall was the number 36 Alpine uh, with a 1 minute 50.512. After that, we've got a string of LMP2. Second, the United Autosports number 23 with a 151.040. Uh, third, the number 22 United Autosports car with a 151.058. Fourth, Real Team uh, number 41 with a 151.244. And fifth, uh, Toyota number 8 with a 151.380. So, a um, couple of things just out of this. Um, first of all, the United Auto Sports cars did quite well in this session. They were right with each other. There's, um, what's that, 18 thousandths of a second? So, like, just over 200, just under two hundredths of a second in between them. And considering the 23 set that time a little bit later into the session, they are basically right on pace. So, um, really good showing for United Auto Sports in the second session. Again, real teams up in the top five. I mean, they've been a pretty consistent show there along with Alpine for I mean the entire week at this point they haven't been there every session but they've been there almost every session uh looking at the other hypercars that weren't in the top five um we have Toyota number seven in eighth and Glickenhaus 708 in 14th um Glickenhaus didn't get out much for that practice they spent about the first 30 minutes of the practice with I mean an outlap and then they came in after that so that wasn't at the end of the session they went out and ran a bit but it didn't exactly look like they're very well up to speed i i assumed that that was something i don't know clicking house is slower so that's something to keep in mind uh toyota number seven again um further down than the eight i think the only session that they've been faster is the first session of the prologue so that keeps showing up uh, but yeah anyways moving on to um the fastest times by class obviously uh alpine number 36 uh, fastest with a 150.5 uh lmp2 united auto sports 23 fastest with a 1510 uh p2 pro-am uh team ultimate is back up there with a 152.142 uh, GTE Pro, uh, again, the Porsche number 92 up there with a 158.488. Uh, and GTE AM, Northwest AMR, one of the first non-Porsches to lead a session with a 2 minutes .029. Times in the session were a little bit slower. I assume they were running race programs instead of kind of qualifying programs. Um, Glickenhaus still has the fastest time of the day despite their performance in session 2, but... Um, it doesn't surprise me that the second session wasn't as fast as the first, considering it's not like a normal weekend where, you know, you go into practice and FP1 is figuring out the track and whatever. That For this, it's, you know, they've had two days before it and 12 hours of running to figure the track out. So, um, these tracks where they have the prologue and then go straight into race week, you're going to see a different setup for practice times and, you know, how they're going to be running each session and that's seemed to have showed itself here. It looks like you had some more qualifying-ish running in uh, FP1, and then in FP2 um, was more um, kind of race program. So um, that's most of what I have. Um, looking on down into GTE Pro, the Corvette was actually second uh, with a 158.5, and uh, third in GTE Pro was the 91 Porsche with a 158.8. So, four tenths off his teammate. Um, moving on down here quite a bit. Uh, AF Corsa behind quite a few LMGTE AM cars. Again, I said the whole class name. I didn't need to do that. Uh, but yeah, AF Corsa behind quite a few AM cars. Again, with a 2 minute point four lap time. And then that was the 52, by the way. The 51 
was actually behind the 52 with a 2 minutes 0.55, so over almost a tenth and a half slower than their teammate, and again, uh, two seconds slower than the rest of the GTE Pro class. Concern, maybe, for AF Corsa? Who knows? Um, GTE Am, obviously, uh, the first time, I think, that an uh, Aston Martin uh, was fastest um, in GTE Am, and I think the first time it was actually a non-Porsche. Um, second was the Dempsey Proton 77 with a 2 minutes point one. Uh, third, Team Project 1 number 56 with a 2 minutes point three. Um, AF Corsa number 21 was uh, 2 minutes point five. Actually, he was faster than the 51, so the GTE AM AF Corsa car beat the pro AF Corsa car. Uh, a lot of the top cars that you generally expect to see up there aren't up there. Team Project 1, 46, was actually the slowest of anyone with a 2 minutes 2.2, which was three tenths off the next slowest time, which was, of course, a 54. Uh, the Dempsey Proton 88 was also very far down in the running order. So the general candidates that you've seen up there aren't exactly in those top couple of cars. They're much further down to the bottom and uh, seen some new guys up at the top. Uh, the Dempsey Proton 77 and the Team Project 156, the team cars to the people that are generally up there. So that's interesting. And then, of course, uh, AMR up at the top of uh, GTE AM, which is interesting, something we haven't seen in a bit. So that's kind of your storylines for the GT classes. Um, so that's about all I have today. Um, I think that tomorrow um, we're going to have uh, both FP3 and qualifying for the WEC and the first two practices for IMSA. So I'll have four sessions to talk about tomorrow and probably a little bit later video because that'll take longer to make and you know the sessions will go longer whatever um so big video tomorrow and then i mean tomorrow is really where the ball starts rolling for a giant weekend all the way till sunday where you know you finally get just one indie car race but really big weekend and i'll be covering um most if not all of it um obviously starting now so uh, thank you guys all so much for watching. Uh, I'll see you guys all tomorrow for uh, IMSA and some more WEC running tomorrow. Bye.